Hello, everybody. Hey, um, we're going to talk about a few misconceptions out there in the Fenton art glass world. And uh, I recently posted a video. I hope you were able to watch it. Um, it was on the history of Fenton. In particular, I think it was uh, 2007, 2008. It was some kind of, um, it was a convention where Scott Fenton came and talked with everybody. Um, and it was an interview that Scott Fenton had. And um, I read it to everybody at home, and we um, kind of talked about it a little bit, and I posted it. So um, I got a response from someone that I, I'm going to read it to you because his response is typical of the way some people feel about Fenton Art Glass and Fenton Gift Shop. So let me read it to you, and then I'll reiterate on the points that were correct and that are incorrect. So um, let me see if I can pull it up here. Okay, first of all, he said, you do not realize that the Fenton gift shop is still owned by the Fenton family. Randy Fenton owns it and many of the molds. He has them pressed at Mosser for his shop. No different than the factory did. The factory often went to other glass companies to press for, for them to help with orders many times. And those pieces were never marked otherwise as not pressed at the factory. So you saying the gift shop isn't Fenton is completely wrong. If a family member says it's Fenton, then who are you to say it isn't? Okay. All right. Let me go ahead and kind of dissect this for you. First of all, um, I realize the gift shop is still owned by a Fenton family member. Of course it is. Um, does that mean that that family member is the same family member that owned the um, factory? No, it does not. Um, is that true? No. The gift shop was always a separate entity from the factory. Maybe the same family, but not the same business at all. Actually, uh, Fenton Art Glass um, had one of their best customers. Matter of fact, one of their number one customers, their retail customers, was the Fenton gift shop. So um, they were always separate. And uh, if they weren't separate, the gift shop would have went out of business along with the factory. The factory owned hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of taxes at the time they went under. The gift shop would have went too. They are totally separate entities. So I don't think this person actually knows that. Um, and yes, Randy owns the molds. Now, he had to buy those molds. So... Um, he went to the final auction and bought molds and um, he actually paid for them. It wasn't that he just had them from the factory. Um, so another reason for them being separate. Now this person makes a point that I don't know is either true or false. He says that Fenton Art Glass when they were in business had Mosser pressed glass for them. Now I have asked and asked around to see if this is true. No one will verify it. The clubs don't don't say a word about any of this so I don't know for sure and if you know comment below what animals or what was pressed at Mosser for Fenton during the time that they were in production because I'm unsure of that comment but it could be true um, at the very end Fenton you know they they uh, didn't have half the staff they had originally and uh, they might have done that but in the, that case that puts up another point if Fenton Art Glass went with one of their molds to Mosser, being the original owner of the mold. It is a Fenton Art Glass piece, no matter who presses it. However, if the gift shop takes a Fenton mold that they bought and takes it over to Mosser to be, re to be made, that is a reproduction or a knockoff, as Scott Fenton had, had said back in 2007. So there is a difference. Um, and I hope I, I explained that to you. Um, it, it, that's exactly what a reproduction is. A different company taking um, another mold that was produced by another company and getting it made. So that's a reproduction. Um, anyway, uh, so I hope I address that. Now I answered this letter and I said, it doesn't matter what is pressed at Mosser by the gift shop. The gift shop is not Fenton Art Glass. So when these pieces are pressed and made by Mosser, they are reproductions of Fenton Art Glass. And there are molds that are owned by dozens of people, maybe even hundreds of people. 
Those are not Fenton pieces when they are produced by a different company after the factory closed. They are the mold owners and are considered reproductions. So um, I addressed that. Now he, he went ahead and uh, answered me. Now I don't think I posted this one. Let's see if I did or not. But I wanted to address his reply too. Uh, he says the gift shop was not just a customer. They used to be separate in a way, but Randy owns and operates it. And we discussed that. It is a separate business. Um, just because in our little town there's a pizza factory called Cascarelli's that makes great pizza, you can go to Albion 15 miles away. There's another Cascarelli's pizza. That's an uncle. It's not the same business at all, but it has the same name. Um, he says, he goes on to say that... Um, the gift shop is still Fenton because a relative runs it. No, no, no. It it may have the same name, but it's not the same animal at all. <clears throat> I'm just reading what he says. He says, I can agree that the pieces are not exactly the same as Fenton factory pieces, that they put more time and effort into the painted piece than the factory ever did. Now that's true as far as the paint time. The artists that are painting these pieces now are not on a quota basis. They're not timed by the factory to have to get out so many pieces a day. So they do spend more time painting the pieces. However, um, they're painting moss or blanks and they do not kiln fire their paint. So you can definitely tell a reproduction because now, since we've done a lot of discussion on this in our group, the pieces are completely sanded so that the paint will last a little longer on the piece. Um, but the, the, it's not permanent paint that they're using now. Um, and they do want to cover every piece of glass. Um, they want it sanded so that the paint will stick longer. So you just have to, you have to understand and um, treat these pieces a little more special than you would something that's been kiln fired. Because if it's kiln fired, it's permanent paint. Um, but I agree with him. The pieces have a little bit more work in them that you than you would see from the factory pieces. But you're buying a Mosser blank, um, and that makes a big difference. Now he goes on to talk about. Um, hopefully someday they'll bring back some of the factory colors, um, and the formulas are out there. We're gonna leave that for another video. I have made a lot of revelations this week. I've learned a lot of revelations this week. And I'm going to address that with you too. Let's hope they don't bring back the formulas because that would just be disastrous to our collectors. And 15 years ago, this is exactly um, what both collectors clubs were trying to protect us against were the reproductions, at least so that we could tell that they were reproductions, but it worried all the collectors. And the things that they are worrying about have actually... Um, come into play now. These these molds are everywhere. They're being reproduced and we really have to be on our game to be able to tell what is real and what is not. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Put a comment below if you have any questions about anything. We're going to do a series of these um, probably within the next week so we can, we can even show you more. We're going to address these issues. You won't see it addressed anywhere else, but we're going to address it right here. So have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in an upcoming video.